Welcome to my video on accessories. I'm going to keep this uh, quick. Uh, this will be the longest instruction video I ever intend to do because I'm going to cover a lot. So first things first, project bags. You don't need anything fancy. You definitely don't need anything like what I use. This is a So Shannon YYC knitting bag. It is fun. It is fabulous. I keep my hand lotion. I can keep three or four projects in it. It is great. You don't need anything super expensive. A grocery bag will, will do. Uh, if you are just starting out and you're not sure what kind of bag you need, go get one of those reusable grocery bags. They work fine. The other thing you want to grab, and oh look, mine matches, is a bag for accessories. A small makeup bag or pencil case will work just fine. So we're going to very quickly go over everything in my accessory bag. Now this is just a fraction of my accessories. In my sewing studio I have a uh, tiered drawer bin that I picked up. It's not a perfect storage system, not a perfect filing system, but it certainly beats having to buy replacement tools and equipment because, oh look, I'm halfway done this project. I'm just going to throw everything into my yarn bin and then you can never find your cable hook again. So this is my tiny little bag and we're going to fill it back up. Not essential kit, but I love having it in there. Lip gloss. Pen, pencil, very self-explanatory, nail clippers. I don't get manicures. I'm a bit of a klutz. I tend to break my nails a lot, so my nail clippers get used a lot. Not essential, but I do recommend them. This is a nail file. This is essential kit because the last thing you want to do is start working on your project and realize that you've just got one tiny little burr on the end of your nail and it keeps catching on your yarn. So I have a glass one. You can use a small little emery board. You can use a metal nail file. Go to a trade show. Chances are somebody is handing out an emery board or nail file with their company logo on it. You don't have to spend a lot of money on these. And yes, I'm a big fan of not spending money on the accessories because then you get to spend it on really nice wool and yarn. A cutting tool. Scissors. This is essential. You are going to want to cut your yarn. Mine has a cap on it and I will explain why in just a moment. Uh, this is super simple and goes in there. Uh, I got that one at a fabric store and that's really all you need for it. Band-Aids. These aren't essential. However, I'm a bit of a klutz. See right here? I cut myself with a bread knife two weeks ago. I bled everywhere. The last thing I want to do is bleed on my knitting project. So you might not consider these essential, but anybody who knows me knows, chances are I will use these. upside down. This is a versatile little tool. There's a ruler on it and any knitter out there will tell you I've lost my tape measure. This is really handy for creating gauge swatches and measuring how many stitches you have per inch. This is also designed for determining the size of your knitting needles because sometimes you'll have a knitting needle that doesn't tell you what size the knitting needle is. So you take it and you go through the various holes until you find a hole it doesn't fit through. Let me go back to this hole. So this is a US 7 or 4.5 millimeter knitting needle. Crochet hooks also fit in this. One of the really cool things about this tool is if you are like me and you like to scour uh, thrift stores and antique sales, sometimes you'll come across vintage knitting needles that don't tell you what they are. So this is great for matching up if you've got two needles, you're not sure they're the same size, this is great for pairing them. Or for double pointed needles that uh, don't have anything written on them and you need to figure out which one of these 30 needles actually go together. Cable hooks. Cable hooks are super handy, super fabulous. Remember how I said that I have a tendency to throw things in boxes? There is another type of cable hook that is actually a hook. It looks like a fish hook. Anybody seen Moana? 
it looks like Maui's fish hook. They're fabulous little needles, except I can't find mine because they are somewhere in the thousand or so boxes I have in the next room. Different type of cable hook in a smaller size. Oh, look, this is a measuring tape. Yay! Every knitter out there will tell you at some point they haven't been able to find their measuring tape. People have stopped questioning if I have a measuring tape because if I'm not using it, it is in the accessory bag and nothing goes missing. However, that is the only measuring tape I can put my hands on like that. This is an empty measuring tape tin. This is a full measuring tape tin of a measuring tape that I found about an hour ago that had been missing for a week. You don't need stitch holders. These are three different size stitch holders. Um, I actually very rarely use these. I tend to use uh, scraps of yarn or waste yarn. There will be an entire video on how to use these or how to use waste yarn. Um, I like the shiny colors. I think they're really pretty. I keep them on hand. I don't use them that often. A darning needle. You need a darning needle, especially when you're finishing off a project. Uh, I also keep an embroidery needle in with mine. Pick up a uh, small case with your darning needles. Uh, this is Clover. This is actually my second one. My first one I literally wore out. Uh, they can fit many different needles in it. I only have one in there because I only ever tend to need one. But uh, this is an important little piece of kit and I do recommend you pick one up. This is not essential. If you are a spinner and you spin your own yarn, yes I do recommend you pick one of these up. But uh, other than that, this is a wraps per inch tool. So you take the yarn, you wrap it around this inch. This is very specifically measured. And then you count how many wraps you get. There are charts online that tell you how many wraps per inch will give you the size of yarn. There will be an entire video on how to read the label on a ball of yarn and how to determine that. Uh, that is not this video. In 27 years, I've never used one of these, ever. I spin my own yarn and I use a lot of homespun, but even then, I've never used one of these. I tend to do gauge swatches rather than use a uh, wraps per inch tool. Safety pin. Any crafter out there will tell you these are your friend and uh, I always keep one in my accessory bag. This is a row counter. This is a really cool little row counter. I quite like it because it slides on the knitting needle. You do all your knitting and as you knit, you turn it for the rows. I like this better than some of the apps that you get for your phone because sometimes you'll forget to hit the button on your phone on the app to indicate that you've done the row. In this case, it is right there. It is staring you in the face. So you just turn it every time you complete a row. You can use a pen and piece of paper. You don't have to use an app. You don't have to get elaborate, but I do love my row counter. The only downside is this one goes to 99 and sometimes I do projects where the rows stop at about 200. The day I talk about 16th century stockings is a day that we will talk about how much I don't like the 99 row counters. Stitch markers. Now there are a lot of stitch markers. I have a lot of stitch markers. These are fun funky, fabulous. They look really cool. Uh, you don't need to get this elaborate. You don't need to get the fun ones. Uh, I only use these when I'm working on socks or non-lace projects because things like this, his tail, will actually catch in the lace and can snag. And I've actually destroyed thousands of hours of work because of these because I wanted to use the fun, cool stitch markers. Uh, I love them. As you can see, I have a thing for cats, but I don't use those very often. These are some of my favorite stitch markers. These were a gift. These were actually made by my best friend in New Zealand, and she sent them up to me, and I love using them. I especially like them because the rings on these ones are a little bit bigger than most of the stitch markers 
that I've come across. So I find them a little bit more versatile when I'm doing sweaters or chunkier projects. And my knitting needles are bigger. These are locking, they actually call these uh, antique safety pins. And I'll quickly pull one out. This bag does not want to open for me. I'm totally not prepared. There we go. So I like these because they can fit over most knitting needles and you can use them as a round stitch marker like these ones. But I also like them because they're locking. So you can take one of these and we're going to use my project right here to show you. You can loop it right into the stitch and lock it up. So I've got just the, oh, the, the dark on the purple doesn't really work, but I've got it locked on a single stitch. If you are just starting out and looking for your first set of stitch markers, these are actually the ones I recommend. They're plastic, they're done by Clover, they come in two different sizes. Uh, get lots of them, you will lose them. But same thing, it loops right on and locks to your stitch. You can also take these, and because I use cable needles, you can slide it right onto the needle to see where it is. So, super handy, super simple. It's a plastic locking um, stitch marker, and they're definitely worth the investment. If you're not sure which type you want, pick these ones up because they will get you through until you decide which type you like. There's those ones. Final thing I'm going to show you. Uh, if you're able to replicate this, great. No promises that you can. This is a yarn cutter. I've had this thing for 20 years. The blades are actually starting to dull. The reason I like this one is because it's solid metal. You can find them. They're plastic. Uh, if you stumble across a metal one, let me know. I'm looking to replace this one. A crochet hook. Now I used to keep one in this bag and then I found this one. This is a two millimeter crochet hook and a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. I keep them on my keychain. If you ever drop a stitch, this is your best friend because it will help save your project with only a little bit of a headache. Stitch marker. Yes, it's a cat. Another row counter. This is my favorite type of row canter. Why? It locks. So I can't lose my row. And I'm not going to click it for you because this is actually an active uh, stitch marker. And finally, my sock. The anatomy of a sock. It breaks it all down because I love knitting socks. This has the Kitchener stitch. There will be an entire video or two on the Kitchener stitch. I can never remember how to start it. So I love this sock for this. The other reason I love this sock is there's a darning needle in it. So this entire bag, save for the tape measure, is literally on my keychain. Uh, if I can find a, a tape measure that'll go on this keychain and not make it weigh any more than it does, I will probably add it to there. So this is my portable little crafting toy and quite often you don't find it in my crafting bag. It's on my coffee table or on my desk or on my couch or the cats have taken it and dragged it somewhere around the house but because it's shiny and big it's usually fairly easy to find. So that is my crash course in accessories. If you're experienced with accessories and think that there is something missing you think is essential kit, definitely leave a comment. Uh, let me know what you think it is. Let other people know what, it think it, what you think it is. Uh, I am by no means perfect. My kit is, of course, definitely not complete. Uh, some people will disagree with me about the cute little kitty stitch markers, but that is all personal preference. There is no right or wrong way of doing any of this. It is all personal preference and I like things that feel good on my hands because I use my hands. And we will cover yarn in a video very, very soon. Thanks and uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Bye.